on the 20th day of October, Halloween gave to me 20 zombies climbing, 19 Richards cheesing, 18 undead trains, 17 morticians regaling, 16 Vincent's cracking, 15 Lee's counting, 14 brides abiding, 13 Carfax Abbeys, 12 fathers stripping, 11 au pairs drowning, 10 children creeping, 9 Roddy's seizing, 8 snowy mazes, 7 bacons digging, 6 doorways bending, 5 children yowling, 4 zombie bulls, 3 haunted mirrors, 2 monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Hey there, everybody. Welcome to day 20 of the 31 days of Halloween, which means it's October 20th. That's how all this counting stuff works. And uh, we find ourselves once more in a, a bit of a stretch of films. This time we are doing some zombie movies. So uh, if you've been listening along, thank you so much. Um, let's dive into it. Uh, this is Hashtag Alive, uh, a movie I cringe to talk about just because of its title. I don't like hashtags in movies because I'm old and grumpy, and now somebody bring me my tea. So, uh, <laughs> that out of the way, Hashtag Alive was a Korean zombie movie that found its way to Netflix, and I, I finally, you know, the, one of the reasons for this list, right, is being able to throw a movie or two on there that's just like, hey, I need to watch this. I need to, I need to make sure that I put this in the in, in the library, and. Hashtag Alive is, uh, first of all, directed by Il Cho. Uh, it stars Ah In Yu, who is uh, a, a very famous young uh, guy actor in Korea, uh, South Korea. And uh, Shin Hai Park, uh, also an actress who has done a number of things uh, in, in South Korea. Um, this is Il Cho's first directorial feature film. But he had done a short previous to this. And, you know, he just knows his way around a camera. Like, I will say some negative things about Hashtag Alive. One thing I will not uh, uh, besmirch this film for is uh, is its look and its pace. It is uh, a tidy 90 minutes. It moves at quite a clip. Uh, I find uh, that it was a fun watch. Now, um, to speak a little bit about sort of the downsides of Hashtag Alive... Well, I should probably tell you what it's about. So, it is uh, about a dude what lives in an apartment building in South Korea. Uh, a zombie outbreak happens. It's, you know, kind of fast, train to Busan kind of style zombies, although not uh, not at that scale, I suppose. But uh, he is stuck in his apartment trying to survive uh, this zombie uprising while he is managing a lack of food and water. And over the course of the film, discovers that there's another survivor across the way from him. And they uh, they work together to try to, uh, you know, stay alive, to, to uh, not just survive, but, but to find a way to safety. So, uh, nothing, you know, <laughs> nothing earth-shattering in terms of the plot of the film. Um, and I would say that's kind of true of the whole movie. Like... The biggest problem with hashtag alive isn't that there's anything really wrong with it. It's just that everything that the movie does, you've kind of seen. This, this is packaged well. It looks good. It sounds good. Um, there are some tense moments, in fact. But it doesn't ever rise above the level of, oh, that was all right. And, and so... You know, coming off the heels of, like, the Dawn of the Dead remake and Train to Busan, you know, it those are movies that really do something interesting or exciting with the premise. Hashtag Alive just feels like a well-done one of those. You know, I don't know that there's anything to differentiate it above the... I, well, there is. Because there are a, a blue million of these zombie movies released every year. I've seen more than my share of them, and I apologize, uh... Honestly, to, to my parents who have uh, since gone on uh, for wasting my life watching things like, you know, Zombie Attack and, <laughs> you know, uh, World of the Dead and shit like that. So I will say this uh, regarding Hashtag Alive. It is better than that kind of movie 
um, because it, it's well done. Like most of those are really amateurish and they look cheap, and this does not. Th this looks good. It it uh, the the acting's great. The effects work is pretty fun. You know, again, nothing shocking. They're like these kind of look like the train to Busan zombies. They're you know super aggro and and fast and veiny and all that stuff. Um, so at the end of the day, is hashtag alive worth your time? Kinda, you know, it's all right. It's got some good moments. The acting is, is good. As I've said, it, it it's, oh man, it's one of those movies that is tough to recommend because there's not anything really like, oh, you've got to see it because of this scene or when this moment happens, you know, like the mortuary collection was one of those where it was like, man, the whole thing's pretty good, but there are a couple of scenes that just blew my socks off. And hashtag alive is missing that kind of thing, um, which which seats it unfortunately in a very mediocre kind of camp uh, as, as we talk about these movies, um, and that's a little bit of a bummer. But what are you gonna do? So uh, hashtag alive, uh, I enjoyed it. It was fun to watch for our thirty one days of Halloween. Will I return to it? Probably not. Probably not. So let's uh, let's turn our attention to the future. We've got more movies to talk about to the tune of eleven, as we uh, we firmly uh, place ourselves in the final stretch of our thirty one days of Halloween. Did get some feedback uh, on the Haunting of Bly Manor reviews that I put up from uh, Robert. Thanks again for dropping me a line, and uh, and it w was kind of agreeing with me, which is always a good way to get a shout out on these shows, is to drop me a line and tell me I was right about something, but had, uh, had talked about how his experience with Haunting of Bly Manor mirrored much of my own in that it felt uh, a little slow going and it felt like it didn't really hang together completely. And he further suggested that originally the, uh, the guy who played the, um, you know, kind of shit heel lover, uh, who takes off was going to be the gardener that uh, the former Nell, the main character in Bly Manor, was going to fall in love with, but because they had played siblings in the previous season, uh, producers thought that might be a little weird, that <laughs> these two actors who pretended to be brothers and sisters might now be pretending to be in love, uh, and so that was changed. You know, I, I do think that probably overcomplicated matters. You know, I don't want to just continually bag on Haunting of Bly Manor because I don't, I don't dislike the show intensely or anything. I just felt like it was disappointing. Um, but Robert had also said that the the way that uh, the individual episodes sort of string together, that the individual episodes can be perfectly fine, and I agree with that. But that when placed in the context of the whole as as a a tapestry of the television show, uh, that's where things get a little dicey and. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll we'll see if they do a third season and what that brings. Um, I, I I would I watch another season? Of course, I would like to see what what comes out of Mike Flanagan's uh, production company. Um, but I do think that the fact that he did not write and direct this stuff, uh, not in total, you know, he he certainly had a hand in some of it, but uh, uh, was not the prime creative driver on the show. Um, I think that's telling, you know, I think he's a, a really talented guy who can sort of make uh, some weaker material feel important and urgent because of his talent as a director and and as a writer. And I think that Bly Manor misses some of that. It does. It just doesn't have the same touch as Haunting of Hill House. And, and Robert also points out, how could it? How could anything be as good as Haunting of Hill House? And I think that's right. You know, that was really a remarkable piece of television and uh, or streaming or whatever we call it now. But it was a remarkable piece of horror filmmaking. And, and Haunting of Bly Manor is okay. <laughs> That's kind of how they stack up. One is a masterpiece. One is fine. So, uh, look, let's get out of here. We're going to be back tomorrow uh, on Wednesday for a new movie. And I'm very excited to talk about the one. Uh, tomorrow we got a, a Homer. We got a favorite coming up. So, uh, something fun to talk about there. In the meantime, uh, if you check out Hashtag Alive or any of these movies, or hell, just want to drop me a line, let me know what you are doing for Halloween, uh, just give me a shout at uh, bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com, and uh, and I will, uh, you know, if it's interesting, I'll read it here, and if it's not interesting, I'll probably still read it here, to be fair. 
Uh, all right. Well, that's it, guys. Have yourselves a very creepy Tuesday. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow for another edition of the 31 Days of Halloween. See you later.